created the heavens and the earth and all the people. We light this candle in your name, creator God, source of life. In Jesus, your son, you lived among us. Through him we know how much you love us. We light this candle in the name of Jesus, who is love incarnate. The Holy Spirit flows through us all like a wind and fills us with energy and life. We light this candle in the name of the Holy Spirit, bearer of love in the world. The Creator God, Christ, Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, creator of the universe, source and giver of love, we worship you. Jesus Christ, chosen one of God, defeater of evil, founder of faith community, we are your disciples. Holy Spirit, inspiration to the world, influence for good, hope of the future, we will work with you. Come, let us worship together. in prayer together. Come to us quietly, gently, O God. Enable us to hear your still, small voice as we pray. Come to us in all the wonder and diversity of creation, O God. Enable us to respond with heartfelt praise and thanksgiving. Come to us in Jesus and his saints of the ages, O God. Enable us to follow with faith and responsibility. Come to us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, O God. Enable us to bring light to the dark places. Amen. So many of us are afraid of taking that first step forward. And then, out of the blue, confession 
becomes affirmation. Let us bow our heads once again in prayer. We have heard the word from God to the prophet Isaiah, Who will I send and who shall go for us? Well, some say, we are feeling the weight of our years. Others say, we haven't the necessary experience. But the reply comes, here am I, send me. Who will I send? Who will go for us? Some say, we're not team players. Others say, we have so much to learn about the faith. But the reply comes, here am I, here am I, send me. Who will send, I send, and who will go for us? Some say we cannot take on the fear-making powers of the world, and others say the influence of evil is all-pervasive. But yet again the reply comes, here am I, send me. Take a moment now for silent reflection. In spite of our hesitation and doubts, in spite of our evasions and feelings of weakness, we have heard the call from God. We have heard the call and we know that there is work to be done. There is work to be done among our families and friends and there is support to be given among the disadvantaged and powerless. We will reply with Isaiah, here am I, send me. Let us join our Christian family in the world in the ritual exchanging of the peace of Christ. Friends, send it out into all the world. The peace of Christ be with you all. Our Hebrew scripture lesson this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voice of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Oh, is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord God of hosts. And then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. The gospel lesson this morning is John 3, verses 1 through 17. Jesus and Nicodemus. There was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. One night he went to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one can perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with you. Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can a grown man be born again? Nicodemus asked. 
He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I'm telling you the truth, replied Jesus. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but is born spiritually of the spirit. Do not be surprised because I tell you that you must all be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it's going. It is like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? asked Nicodemus. Jesus answered, You are a great teacher in Israel, and you do not know this? I am telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we have seen. Yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me then when I tell you about the things of heaven? And no one has ever gone up to heaven except the Son of Man, who came down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to be its judge, but to be its savior. Let us pray. God grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. If you get a chance to read all four of the scriptures set aside for today's lectionary, you will find, appropriately for Trinity Sunday, that the passages give expression to God in many ways. A mighty creator who fills the worshiper with awe and wonder, as a teacher who speaks with grace and truth, as ever-present spirit guiding us as we live our lives. Trinity Sunday. Libraries of books have been written to unpack the imagery inherent in the idea of a triune God. Now these academic treatises are interesting and very important Today I thought to focus on a simpler understanding of how we understand the Trinity. This story comes to us from Paul Fader, who is a well-known United Church author of prayers and stories for worship. Paul begins by highlighting a poem by John Sachs called The Parable of the Blind Man and the Elephant. It starts out like this. There were six men of Indostan to learning much inclined, who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind, that each by observation might satisfy his mind. Now, the poem goes on to explain that as the six blind men take their positions around the elephant, the first one gropes along the huge animal's side. Obviously, he thinks this beast is like a wall. The second feels the animal's tusk. Obviously, this beast is a spear. The third, touching the trunk, insists that the elephant is a snake. The fourth, feeling the elephant's leg, is certain the beast is a tree. The fifth, grasping hold of the elephant's ear, announces that the beast is like a fan. The sixth, hanging on to the tail, says, no, this elephant is like a piece of rope. The parable ends. 
And so these men of Indostan disputed long and loud, each in his own opinion, exceeding stiff and strong. Though each was partly in the right, they all were in the wrong. So as we look at it, although each party was partly in the right from their own point of view, each was making a judgment based on their limited experience. That seems to be what we do when we talk about God as well. We each have a unique relationship with God. For Christians most, offering, most often encountering God in one of the Trinitarian aspects, Creator, Christ, Spirit. One of uh, my friends lost their younger sibling suddenly in an accident. It devastated the family. Each member of the fa family found solace in different pieces of the ritual goodbyes. Some found it in the power of the word. Some in stories shared from friends and family. The soul touch of music being gathered in the arms of the community. But my friend's grief was untouched, and it worried me. And I didn't see him for a while after the funeral. The next time I did see him, it was a month or so later, and I could sense a change. The grief was still there, but I could feel a pervading calm underlying it. It turns out that he had just returned from a three-week canoeing trip in Algonquin Park. In the beauty and tranquility, in the silence and the wonder, the Creator had tended his soul. I once knew a young woman who was struggling with many challenges in her life. She was searching for meaning and for the power to go on. One day, at a youth retreat, I saw the light go on. We were discussing the story of the bent over woman and suddenly there was resonance from the story. She persisted. From that moment on, the stories, the life and teachings of Jesus became a touchstone from which she claimed power for her life. Through word, her soul, was tended. One evening last week I was watching the NBC News and a particular story spoke to me, a particular moment in that story to be precise. A high school senior named Joshua Nelson got some great news a couple of months ago. He was accepted to his college of choice, Southeast Missouri State, and had been awarded a $43,000 scholarship. This news was a huge relief to Joshua, who had been working at a fast food restaurant and saving every cent since he was 15 in hopes that he would be able to go to school. He was, needless to say, overjoyed. But Joshua also wanted to share his joy. So after hearing the news about his scholarship, Joshua took some of his own carefully saved money and started another scholarship to help fund another student in his school. Beginning with his own $1,000, he has now raised $15,000 for that scholarship fund, and he, forgets to, and he gets to present the first award at this month's graduation. It was a great feel-good story. But the moment that got me was his response to the question about where that foundation came from for him. After acknowledging his parents, he stated with under, simple, understated power, I am a man of strong faith. I believe in giving. You could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit with this young man, even through the television. Through the power of the Spirit, his soul danced. A teenage boy looking calmly and directly into the camera and saying, I am a man of strong faith. Through the power of the Spirit, 
within you. On this Trinity Sunday, open yourselves to God's presence. May Creator, Spirit, or Christ tend your soul. May you sing songs of praise. May your own spirit dance. Thank you for continuing to collect your Change the World offerings, which are dedicated to OSHARE. We'll be happy to receive them when we return to in-person worship. As we weave our way toward the end of yet another shutdown, we once again want to thank you for your continued ministry, calls and cards and prayers, all the ways you attempt to reach out and to care for one another. We also appreciate all those who are able to provide financial support that the church may continue its good work. Donations may be mailed or you can join PAR or click to donate on our church website. And now let us honor all our gifts in prayer. Let us pray. We offer to you, O God, the work of our hands and our hearts, our dreams and our hopes, trusting that they will benefit our community and our world. Bless them and multiply them to your use, we pray in Christ's name. 
Amen. me in prayer. God who dwells beyond us, God who dwells among us, God who calls us to dwell together, bless us now as we gather our thoughts in prayer. Send your spirit searching within our hearts and know us through and through. In words and in sighs too deep for words, hear our prayers and in your love answer. Hear the thanks we raise for the wonder of the green and lively world around us, for the early morning chorus of birds, for the seeds sprouting in the garden, for the warmth of summer sun on our faces and for the wind in our hair. For these things and for the breadth of life we share, we offer thanks and praise to you, O oh God. Hear the worries that haunt us for your creation in danger for your children in Palestine and Israel, for families grieving the dead girls of Afghanistan, for countries overwhelmed with COVID, and for victims of intimate partner violence. For all these things and for the task of healing and reconciliation to which you call us, we raise our prayers of concern. Hear our mingled thanks and concern, O oh God, for the people who share our life, for the ones who care for us, and for the ones who need our care, for the joy they bring us and for the love they call forth from us, and for the blessings we know in relationships. We give thanks and praise. For the wholeness and health of those same loved ones, for the healing of those who are sick, for the comfort of the grieving, and for the lifting up of the tired and the peace for those in turmoil, we raise our prayers of concern. God who dwells beyond us, God who dwells among us, God who calls us to dwell together, hear our prayers and in your love answer. For we bring them in the strength of the Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
into the world in love. Care for one another and for the earth. Seek justice. Make peace. Carry God's word of hope with you as you go. In the grace of Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forever. Amen. Amen.